So I just sat here for like three minutes trying to record a funny intro and I don't have a funny intro. So like, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> ah, I got nothing to say. <laughs> I got to talk about my PP pee -pee problems or something and then, uh, and then we can get into the video. You know what I love? Bug Pokemon. They're so great. My favorite Pokemon of all time evolves from this tiny caterpillar after all. Uh, yeah, that seems right. But in Generation 1, Game Freak wasn't very kind to them because there aren't any good bug moves. After all, there are only three that actually deal damage in those games. But in Generation 2, Game Freak really tried to improve things by introducing bug moves like Fury Cutter and Megahorn. So today's playthrough with Yanma should be fairly easy, right? Here are the rules for this playthrough. Only Yanma in battle. No items in battle, including held items. No glitches or exploits. Today I'm going to allow myself to use Double Team because Yanma actually learns this move through level up. However, if I need to relearn Double Team through TM, I won't use it until level 100. So, remember all those great bug moves that I mentioned earlier? Well, Yanma doesn't get access to any of them. It actually doesn't learn any bug moves at all. All of the forgotten Pokemon that I've been playing through in Generation 2 with seem to suffer from this problem. They just lack compelling movesets. It feels as if they were designed to be forgotten. Unfortunately, in Gold and Silver, Yanma was treated this way. It has no bug or flying moves. At all. Oh wait, I'm sure there's lots of you who are very knowledgeable about Yanma and realize, hey, it actually gets leech life as an egg move. Uh, so that really doesn't repair the situation very much. Game Freak clearly realized how bad things were in Gold and Silver, and so in Crystal version they actually gave Yanma Wing Attack, which it accesses through level up. For today's challenge, I replaced Chikorita with Yanma using the Universal Pokemon Randomizer. I also used a save editor called PKX Delta to set Yanma's determinate values, and I set these in a way to give it hidden power bug. So today it's going to be a 70 power same type attack bonus move. One of the implications of setting hidden power is that Yanma's stats can't be perfect but the stat difference is too small to pass up this powerful move. Now it's time to discuss what Yanma was based off of, and I think for these forgotten Pokemon, it's nice to give a little bit of exposure to what they were actually initially inspired by. I did receive this really compelling comment on my Murkrow video, and yes, Yanma does really look like a plane, but I think it's just much more clearly based on a dragon bug. Because Bug is one of its typing, I thought that it would be funny to replace the Bug in Dragon Bug with its other typing. So in this case, I give it the nickname of Dragonfly. Yanma's stats are a strange thing. It gets 75 in Special Attack, which is fairly decent. However, the only special moves it learns are Giga Drain, Solar Beam, and Thief. That's just another way that it feels like it was designed to be forgotten. Being a bit more positive, this little Dragon Bug's speed is great. So at least we'll attack first before getting shredded, because Yanma's defenses are paper thin. Well, more like cardboard thin, because Chansey's defenses are actually paper thin. As a prediction, I think that Yanma is destined for the bottom of the tier list. It's going to struggle with Whitney, Price, Claire, Lance, Red, and likely others. There are also two trainers that might be tricky. I'll talk about them later. Maybe you've got the foresight to know who I'm referring to, though. Here's some nostalgia. Just outside Violet City, this Weedle poisons Yanma. My health is low, but the Pokemon Center is near. Who remembers this? As a kid, I would run towards the heel and generally black out a few steps away. I'd get teleported back to the last town and then generally lose my mind. But today I've got an extra potion, so I heal up and make it into the city without any issues. Sprout Tower is a great place for Yanma to level up. The Bellsprout hardly deal any damage. So for perhaps the only time in this run, Yanma is a tank. But that's going to end very soon, because Faulkner's Majestic Birds are next. Just before we face Lance's son, I'll mention my approach to the music in this video. I'm trying to mix things up a bit, so we get to explore more of the Generation 2 soundtrack more regularly. I'm going to change where I place certain tracks, just so that we hear more of the Generation 2 soundtrack regularly. Also, the soundtrack is now mono, so headphone users who are only using one channel will now get the entire musical experience. Well, let me know if you like it in the comments. So, it's time for Faulkner, and here Yanma won't have to worry about accuracy. The issue is that the Pidgeotto is going to use Gust, and I shouldn't get ahead of myself. I've got to pass the first Pidgey first. I use Quick Attack, and it doesn't knock it out, but the bird only deals 3 HP of damage, and then faints to my second Quick Attack. Pidgeotto time. I use Quick Attack, and it looks like it's going to be a 4 hit. Gust does 13 damage. We exchange blows again, and now I'm down to 17 hit points. 
I think that I've got this now. I survive the next hit with four hit points and then finish the bird off. On the journey south, I save and dodge a hiker. I really don't want to face off against rock types right now because of my move set. I grab the TM for Swift and I'm so excited to immediately teach it to Yanma that I forget Foresight. This is a huge mistake. As soon as I did this, I realized. I need this move to get past the next rival's Ghastly and to defeat Morty. Yanma's first move that can damage ghost type Pokemon is Supersonic at level 31. And that's not even a direct damage move. If you do want direct damage, you'll have to be playing Pokemon Crystal and level up to level 37 in order to learn Wing Attack. But because I saved before the hiker, I just reset and walk this short distance back and correct this major misplay. Bugsy is the next challenge. Metapod isn't too hard. I use Swift twice and finish it with Quick Attack. Scyther is next, and Swift isn't doing much damage. Fury Cutter is going to get scary fast, and on its fourth hit I get taken down to 14 hit points. I won't survive another hit. It's now or never, Yanma. This little dragon bug is dealing enough damage though, and the scythe-armed bug faints. Kakuna is last, and it has Poison Sting, so I'm not done yet. First turn it uses Harden, giving me a free hit. Next it goes for Poison Sting. It doesn't poison Yanma, and then it faints next turn. Now I've got to face the rival, and Foresight is required here to defeat his Ghastly. That is, if I don't want to use Struggle. Believe me, I don't. <laughs> I use it turn 1, and Ghastly fails a Hypnosis. Turn 2, I start to attack, but Ghastly survives and puts Dragonfly to sleep. Okay, now how many turns am I going to stay asleep? Hopefully just one or two. Well, my little dragon bug stays asleep for five turns, and that gives the Licking Ghost time to deal a decent amount through chip damage. As soon as Yanma wakes up, Swift knocks Ghastly out. The rival sends out Quilava next. Swift doesn't do more than half damage, and it uses Ember, dealing 24 damage to me. Because I can't survive another one of those, this fight ends in defeat. I need to train. Without great luck, I don't see Yanma knocking the Quilava out, and I'm not quite hopeless enough to start using Double Team. After all, Double Team makes like the worst content possible. Maybe in a few levels I'll be able to take this fight on straight up. Luckily, I skipped most of the trainers in the cave, so I can quickly backtrack and use them to level up. At level 19 I'm going to learn Sonic Boom, and fixed damage might be what I need against the Quilava. I set up Foresight first turn again, but this time Ghastly chooses Lick. I avoid the potential paralysis, strike back with Swift, and it gets a massive critical hit and knocks Ghastly out in a single turn. Time to try Sonic Boom against Quilava. That's still 3 hit range though. I survived the second Ember because Ghastly didn't wear me down, and then I knocked the fire type out. Zubat is last, and I only have 13 hit points left. It uses Bite first turn, but it only does a pathetic 5 points of damage. Swift crits and the bat goes down. While Sonic Boom helped, the real reason I made it through this fight was the clutch critical hit against Ghastly. In Goldenrod, I skipped the radio card. I'll grab it later. I also skipped the bike. I don't need it for Kanto now because I've adjusted my routing. I skip Abra as well. Teleport doesn't add significant times to my playthrough, so I won't need it. It's much better in Gold and Silver anyways. After that, I am going to head north and do a bit of training before Whitney. Just the thought of rollout makes Yanma shudder. And then I encounter this random trainer's Meryl. Look at how much damage it did with rollout. This frail little bug doesn't stand a chance against Whitney right now. Plus, I need to talk to the sister of the squirt model lady. I still don't know what to call her. Uh, you've made a lot of suggestions. I think we need to come together and decide a name for her. I'm going to propose the name Denise so that Dennis has his counterpart in these runs. If you agree, you can put it in the comments, but I'm probably just going to make a poll about this at some point in the near future. It's time for Whitney. She opens with Clefairy and I want to play straight up. Maybe Headbutt can do it. It does have a 30% chance to flinch after all. Clefairy is easy to knock out and then the milk drinking cheese making rollout machine is up next. I use Headbutt and it causes a flinch. Yes, that's just what I needed. Turn 2 isn't as lucky though, and the cow starts to roll, and does so much damage with the first hit. It hits again, and poor little Yanma gets completely demolished. Okay, that wasn't good. Okay Whitney, Yanma can turn on the cheese machine too. This is for the Pokemon community after all. It's time for justice. I set up double team 6 times against Clefairy. The dragon bug is prepared to dodge the rolling cow. But it doesn't need to, because its headbutt makes the cow shudder and flinch first turn. Second turn, it uses rollout though and connects. Yanma survives with one hit point. <laughs> okay, <laughs> hype victory incoming, right? Because double team's gonna let me avoid all the rollouts. Oh, <laughs> I guess not. Rollout just connects again right away, despite all my double teams. That's pretty demoralizing. Even my cheesy strat didn't work. I want to avoid too many resets, so I'll spend a bit more time training instead. 
After defeating all the trainers in the gym, I head north to National Park. I swear that I never fight any of the trainers in here, and that leads to a surprise encounter with Raichu. Oh no, this could be really bad. What if it just hits me with Thundershock or something? I use Headbutt, and luckily Yanma gets a critical hit. I'll never know if this Raichu could have one-hit me. The experience points from this battle lets Yanma level up, and it starts to learn Detect. This is exactly the move I need to counter Rollout. I can prevent it from building momentum now, and play straight up with Headbutt. I don't get a flinch against the cow first turn, and then it starts to roll. Detect breaks the combo. My next headbutt gets a critical hit, and then the cow starts to roll again. Rinse and repeat. Detect breaks the combo. I strike back with headbutt, the cow flinches, and Yanma finishes it off. Between Goldenrod and Ecritique City is the pseudo tree, and an unspoken pseudo rule of these challenges has always been to fight it and defeat it. You can just run away, but that's pretty boring, so today the rock disguised as a tree is sort of a mini boss. I use Headbutt and it deals hardly any damage because it's a normal move. Luckily the Rock Tree isn't very smart and just keeps using Headbutt. And then this happens. I get it to flinch twice in a row. I've got really good luck with this move lately. Nice. Then the tree starts to flail and knocks Yanma out. Next fight is even more demoralizing. After exchanging blows for 3 turns with Sudowoodo, it uses Rock Throw and takes Yanma down to 2 hit points from 77. It could potentially just 2 shot us at the very start of the fight. I'm really lucky that this thing doesn't have good AI. Double team is the answer. I set it up five times, Sudowoodo mimics double team and starts to use it. So I want to act now before it sets it up too much. Letting it go longer is going to become an even bigger nightmare. It takes a while with headbutt and I get three flinches along the way, but finally Yanma knocks the fake tree out. Next I face the kimono girls and I have a realization. I'm worried about nearly every trainer in this game. Faulkner, Bugsy, Whitney, Sudowoodo, random trainers Raichu, Jolteon and Flareon in here. This cute little dragon bug's typing is just not particularly good. Luckily the kimono girls end up being very easy, and they provide a lot of experience which prepares me for burned tower. The rival opens with haunter. It has the disposition to use curse first turn, so I decide to use detect to prevent it. Does detect actually prevent it? I'm not actually entirely sure. Second turn, I've got to use foresight, and this gives haunter the opening it needs to of course curse Yanma. Headbutt finishes the ghost off, and I've avoided curse damage for now. Because next is Magnemite, and its steel typing stalls me out long enough for the curse damage to take me out. The pile of bolts got me. I'm starting to realize a pattern here. I attempt to fight, Yanma fails, and then I go train. There's a small repeating script that I could just write and say every time. So here it is, it's, it's too hard, I need to train, because in a few levels I'll learn a new move, and that move is really going to help in this fight. In this case, I'll get access to Supersonic at level 31, and it could be the ticket to avoiding Haunter's Curse. On my way to Olivine City, I bump into Corsola. Oh hey, I uh, didn't forget what Corsola is based on today as well, I just wanted to say that. Corsola, don't worry, you're not forgotten anymore. I think this little pink piece of coral is looking to slow Yanma down, because it wants to be higher in the tier list. Or to get revenge on me. And to slow me down and frustrate me, it uses Harden and Recover, over and over, until I run out of PP for Headbutt. Okay, now I have to deplete my enormous PP. I can't even state how much there is. 40 in Foresight, 5 in Detect, and 15 in Double Team. And the process of depleting this last move raises my evasion, turning this into a staring match. <laughs> Unlucky for Yanma, the Pink Coral eventually lands enough hits and I faint before making it struggle. After training on a few additional trainers, I come back here and take my sweet revenge. You're not slowing us down anymore today. Now it's time for the lighthouse. I'm experiencing the trauma of a Yanma playthrough at this point, and because of that I've just started saving at random spots like this. <laughs> like the trainer right ahead of me has a knocked owl, and that might be hard for Yanma to deal with because it's a flying type, so I should save probably. Who knows when another random Corsola trainer is just going to show up and ruin Yanma's day for a bit. Despite the fact that <laughs> it's got dragon in its name, this little bug can't catch a break. I finished this section of the game off by getting my swagger on and making the mandatory stop to say hi to Dennis. Also hey Dennis, I really appreciate you. Thanks so much for commenting on all my videos. I hope you have a great day man. Second rival time. I try supersonic first turn, maybe this will let me prevent curse, but the hunter still uses it and now I'm forced to use foresight while I'm cursed, so that's even worse than before. But I'm 6 levels higher than my last attempt, so Magnemite is taking more damage and that's encouraging. It's time to pop the cassette in and press play. Let's level up some more, try again, I really hope that I don't have to level up all the way for wing attack. I come back at level 34 and I get cursed first turn again. Ugh. 
Headbutt manages the Haunter and then Magnemite comes out. It confuses Yanma, but gets knocked out by my intimidating dragon butt. Quilava is next. Unfortunately for me, Yanma hits itself in confusion and the fight spirals out of control. I attempt one more time at level 34 because I just don't want to say the same thing again. Like, okay, I'm going to go grind, I'm going to level up, maybe when I'm a higher level it'll be fine, maybe if I have wing attack it'll be fine. And then uh, first turn, yep, Haunter just curses me again. Headbutt deals with the Haunter and Magnemite comes out. Yenma avoids damaging itself this time, so that's good, and it knocks the opponent out. Then the stars align, and I get a critical hit against Quilava, taking it out in a single hit. This is just what I needed. I use Headbutt against Zubat, and I get another critical hit. Yes! <laughs> this victory was absolutely pure luck. Yenma needed luck just to get past this fight, and it was level 34. This rival fight is usually challenging, but this was a whole different level. I'm starting to get really worried for the rest of the major battles in Johto. Speaking of which, Morty is coming up next. Morty. What did I, What was that? That was like the worst delivery of Morty ever. In his gym, I get a sense for how things are going to go against his team of multiple ghosts. I didn't know how Foresight worked, so I tested to see if it applied to the battle or just to the ghost on the field. Unfortunately, it's only the current Pokemon, so I'll have to use it against each of Morty's team. Four times just setting up to do damage? That's honestly pretty painful. It's going to make Curse a death sentence. Or it's gonna make a curse a curse. It's a real curse because there's a curse. I, I don't know what I'm doing. This is not a joke. <laughs> okay, let's just move on. Ghastly comes out and I go for supersonic to prevent curse. The gas ball hits itself somehow. Well, ghost type attacks are physical after all. I guess this little thing's got like punching hands somewhere in there. And then after that, I use foresight. Mean look. Okay, this could work. I finish it off with headbutt. Haunter is next. I set up foresight and then it puts me to sleep. While Yanma's peacefully dreaming of other dragons like Dragonite or Salamance, Haunter puts a curse on it and goes to town with Nightshade. And then another unfortunate five turns of sleep leads to Yanma's demise. So this isn't going to work. I'm close to wing attack and grinding against wild Pokemon is painful in Johto, but this stab move is going to be the only consistent way to defeat the Ghostmaster. That is, without using double team. I said I'll allow it for Yanma, but like I just really don't want to use it because making the entire run about just throwing dice over and over is just not fun. Wing attack is just around the corner, so I think that that's the best option. Once I learn it, I finally got a stab move. That feels really good. And Yanma is becoming a buff dragon bug at level 37. It's really over leveled now. So this has got to be a shoe in now. I knock Ghastly out in a single hit. Yes, it feels so good. The following Haunter is just as easy. And then Gengar comes out. I use Wing Attack, but the Trolley Ghost survives and puts Yanma to sleep. And Yanma really likes to sleep. I am now reflecting on the fact that I said Gengar never puts my Pokemon to sleep in my last Johto video. I clearly jinxed this fight. Gengar uses Dream Eater five times and Yanma faints. Again, at level 37. Okay, third attempt. <laughs> this is getting really old. I'd like to move on and have an easier fight against Chuck. Could I please do that, Morty? Please just miss Hypnosis like you usually do. But it doesn't get a chance to miss because I score a critical hit and I knock it out. After a truly painful section of the game, Yanma is finally moving on. I made the decision to go to the Lake of Rage next. Getting Hidden Power Bug completes my set of two stab attacks. I catch the red Gyarados and name it Callus Hope. He's one of my patrons, and one of his favorite Pokemon is Gyarados. Thanks for the support. I'm already over here and I don't have fly, so I might as well do the hideout now and gain some levels. Of the next three gym leaders, two of them are honestly terrifying. I've got no answer for Jasmine's Magnemite, and Price's Piloswine knows Blizzard, and that's going to hit really hard. With the rockets out of the way, I'm going to challenge the next three gyms in order of perceived difficulty. So Chuck, Price, and then Jasmine. I think I got this right because Chuck's gym is incredibly easy. The hardest part of this entire gym was just deciding if I should teach Yanma Screech or not. It's like deciding on which restaurant you want to order from on Skip the Dishes. This move could be useful against Steelix, but Supersonic and Double Team are hard to part with at this point. I decide not to and I face Chuck. Yanma one-shots both of his Pokemon and <laughs> this feels really good. It's been such a tough road so far and to sweep through like this just really rallies my morale. In the Ice Gym, I spent some time training. I wanted to get a feel for how Yanma does against Ice-type moves, but I steamroll through all the Pokemon here with ease. Price opens with Seal, and it's an easy one-shot. Dugong is next. Wing Attack isn't a one-hit, Aurora Beam follows, Yanma tanks it well, and then takes the Ice-type out. Piloswine is next, and I just need to avoid Blizzard, but Price is clearly not all there today, and he uses Fury Attack instead of Blizzard, giving Yanma the win. 
I've got momentum now. Can Jasmine stop it? Well, yes she can, and she does so in a way that honestly makes things truly hopeless. <laughs> Thunder Wave cuts Yanma's speed and consistency immediately, then Thunderbolt does massive damage. Okay, I was worried before, but now I'm not even sure it's possible to get to Steelix without wild luck. I do manage it, but then the snake uses rock throw, and I really don't know how to communicate just how bad this felt. I kept trying and kept failing. I thought Supersonic would allow me to progress, however being able to avoid hits from two Magnemites and then Steelix for an extended period of time requires so much luck. A Miracle Berry or a Paralyzed Cure Berry would have solved the Thunder Wave problem, but that's against my rules. I could use Double Team, but where's the fun in that? Like, I honestly should have just banned it at the beginning of the run. So I've got to think to myself how I can brute force her down as fast as possible. While I'm training on the sea, I decide that I should feed Yanma some vitamins. I use 3 protein and 3 calcium, which by the way boost both special attack and special defense stat in this game. And that's pretty broken I think. Now I want my physical moves to do more damage because both wing attack and hidden power bug are physical moves. So I'm going to train specifically for stat experience. Briefly here's how it works. In generation 1 and 2 your Pokemon gains stat experience equal to the base stats of the opposing Pokemon. To gain maximum experience and attack, I'll need to defeat Pokemon like Tauros. Unfortunately, it only has a 5% encounter rate here. Luckily, Raticate and Miltank also give decent attack stat experience here, so I knock them out as well. I level up to level 50 and now I'm in a range where I can sometimes one-hit the Magnemites. I could roll the dice at this point with double team, but I think that the consistent fight is just around the corner. At level 51, I'll be able to make it past them reliably and get to Steelix without paralysis. So it's time to grind again. I've honestly always disliked this process. As a kid I was so impatient, I'd just use the missing no glitch and level up my Pokemon with rare candies. Obviously I didn't know about stat experience, so I thought that this was the same thing as leveling them up in combat. But this glitch isn't available in generation 2, so I had to find another way to avoid grinding. You might not know this, but you can actually clone Pokemon in these games. I used to spend hours cloning my red Gyarados while it was holding a rare candy. This was my method of grinding. Today I sort of wish I could do that for Yanma. A few extra rare candies would help. And you might wonder why I'm not using the one that I picked up in the lighthouse. Well, I'm saving as many as possible for red. Grinding at level 90 takes a lot longer than grinding at level 50, so I really don't want to have to grind then. Moment of truth. Can Yanma do it? It knocks the first Magnemite out. I've just got to do that again. The second one comes out, and then it survives. Come on! <laughs> it's still a roll? After becoming paralyzed again, Yanma puts a decent fight against the Steelix, but it just isn't enough. Do I have to just use double team here? No, I'm committed to finishing these steel types off without it. I'm gonna level up a couple more times and at level 53 I should be able to one shot these pesky Magnemites. So let's see if this is the case. Hidden power one shots the first Magnemite. I try it again and the next one faints too. Okay, that's good. Steelix comes out, I confuse it and it damages itself. I use hidden power and Steelix snaps out of confusion right away. Absolutely great. And then my supersonic fails three times in a row. On the fourth attempt, I was feeling pretty defeated, but it managed to confuse it. Okay, is a clutch victory incoming? Uh, nope. <laughs> Rock throw lands, and Yanma faints. Great. On attempt number 13, I try to use Thief. Maybe special damage is the answer I'm looking for. However, Steel resists Dark type in this generation, so this isn't a better answer. It's time to try a silly learn set. Supersonic and Swagger together. Why these two together, you might ask? Well, Steelix will do double damage if it attacks after I use Swagger. But I can use Swagger when I'm one hit away from defeat to boost Steelix attack and cause it to deal more damage to itself. So Supersonic to start, and then Swagger to finish. I must channel the power of Dennis here. Okay, so first attempt, it didn't work out. But I should give Yanma a little pat on the back because it's consistently defeating both of the Magnemites now. Oh wait, it's still a range at this level? Okay, well, that's bad. <laughs> this is the hardest wall that I've had to face in Johto yet. I think in any challenge. It's not a brick wall, it's, it's a steel wall. Normally I say that the Johto games are easy, but honestly, that's normally because I'm not playing with Yanma. I level up to level 54 to ensure that I'm going to finish the Magnemites off in a single hit. Steelix comes out, Supersonic confuses, Rock Throw hits, I use Hidden Power, and the Snake damages itself in confusion. Yanma gets taken down to 70 hit points. Steelix snaps out of confusion, gets confused again from Supersonic, damages itself, and Jasmine heals it with a Hyper Potion. I got so worried here. If Rock Throw hits, I might lose. It does, but Yanma survives with 16 hit points. I've got a 50% chance to win. It needs to hit itself. It does, and Yanma finally takes the victory. No double team required. But I did rely on the luck of Supersonic. 
It feels much fairer to use confusion moves though because it's only a 50% chance, whereas double team once stacked is much more consistent. The rocket plotline is next, and I'm extremely overleveled. So what is usually the most boring part of the game is now even worse. While it's a slog, I think that this work is going to pay off, because Yanma needs as many levels as possible. To make this frustrating run even more anger inducing, I forgot to finish these trainers off earlier on, and now I have to defeat the level 8 Pokemon when I'm in the 50s. After they're finished, the rival is very easy. Actually, everything is starting to feel very easy now. Maybe I shouldn't say things like this because then the game throws Jasmine at me, and it might throw Claire at me right after this, so I should be a little bit more humble. Uh, everything still feels quite challenging. Yanma is not very good. Please make Claire easy. <laughs> Here's how she goes. Wing attack, dragging her down. Wing attack for a second time, and dragging her two down. Third wing attack, dragging her three down. Kingdra comes out, and I do over half damage to it with a single hit. Yanma tanks Surf like a boss, and then finishes the dragon off. Alright, so all this grinding has generated some momentum. Maybe I was right to say that things are feeling easier. Yeah, they are feeling easier. The final rival fight is next, and I'm never worried about him. His first two Pokemon are Sneasel and Golbat, and Yanma takes care of them with ease. Magneton- <laughs> I made like a Magneton noise there. It was like a Mag- I am Magneton. Oh, that's the dumbest thing. <laughs> I don't even know if I can like stomach putting that in the- Oh, it's so cringe. I don't know if I can stomach putting that in the bloopers. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have to put it in the video. Hidden power isn't very effective, and then the steel type nightmare paralyzes Yanma. I end up missing one attack because of the paralysis, but I do manage to take it out. Typhlosion is next, and due to paralysis it uses flame wheel first and takes Yanma down to 30 hit points. Wing attack please be a one hit, but it isn't. And so Yanma's finished. And then the second fight is even worse. It's nice that I'm facing Typhlosion with 69 hit points, but it still uses flame wheel and knocks me out. I spoke too soon. Yanma can't catch a break. I decided that if I lost to this rival a fifth time that I would go and train more. On the fifth fight, I try to use Detect to prevent Thunder Wave. Maybe it won't use its second turn, but it just uses its second turn again anyways. But this time it fails. For the first time, I knock it out and I'm not paralyzed. I'm gonna outspeed Typhlosion now. Yanma's very healthy this time, so Typhlosion sets up with Smokescreen instead of attacking with Flame Wheel. That's what I needed. After avoiding the paralysis, Yanma can now take down the Typhlosion and sweep through the rest of his team. Here's Yanma's moveset before the League. Wing Attack has been great so far and will continue to put in work against Koga and Bruno. Hidden Power Bug was the only reason that Yanma defeated Jasmine and it's going to make Will and Karen both simple. Maybe today is the day that I can one-shot the Umbreon. The only question here is how Lance will go. Can Wing Attack do it? Let's find out. I'm going to summarize Will. Hidden Power Bug is good. It's really good. Koga is also easy. The moment I'm most proud of in this fight is predicting that Fortress would use Explosion, so I went for Detect. It really likes to blow up when it's in red health. It does blow up and then I prevent all the damage. Wing attack makes Bruno easy. Taking Onyx out is slow because I don't have a special move yet. I could have learned Solar Beam at this point, but I'd still take one turn of damage, so I don't think it's worth it in my opinion. So because I have a stab bug move here, Karen's really easy as I predicted. I am actually able to one-shot the Umbreon. I have a hypothesis about why Yanma is so effective here, so let me explain it to you. Its nickname is clearly concealing that it's a bug type Pokemon and that it's based on a dragon bug so Karen doesn't know about that typing. So in this case, I guess that bug is just its hidden power. For Lance, I decide to keep my moveset as it is. I'm 20 levels higher, so I think that I'm going to be able to get it done. Gyarados is a two hit. The first Dragonite misses Thunder Wave, thankfully, and then I take it down. On the second one, I also avoid Paralysis, but this time I do it with Detect. And then Blizzard hits. But Yanma is such a boss, and it tanks it like it's nothing. I bet that this is going to be a victory now. Aerodactyl comes out next, and it immediately uses Rock Slide, which just squashes my bug in one hit. I guess I should have waited to celebrate again. I just can't say nice things about Yanma. If I do, hard times are around the corner. I try the League again immediately, because with a different moveset, I think that I can defeat Lance. But this time I get poisoned against Koga, and Fortress finishes me off. I guess that's revenge for detecting its explosion last time. On my third attempt, I make it back to Lance. I've got a better move set, but unfortunately Aerodactyl is still too strong. So, guess what? <laughs> Pop the cassette in. I've gotta go grind now. Maybe at a higher level, this fight will be easier. I'm just accepting this reality. I've just gotta put the time in. Eventually Yanma will be strong enough. While I generally don't like grinding, one thing I do love is having time to clear my mind. This leads to some creative realizations. 
Here's mine for today. I'm going to try to use the sunny day solar beam combo. And this is how it plays out. I just really can't get past Lance. <laughs> so remember when I deleted Foresight earlier on and I said that that was a big mistake and that I would have paid for it dearly if I didn't reset and go back and fix it? I made a much more fundamental mistake even before that. Remember when I deleted Foresight early on? That was a big mistake, and I would have paid for it dearly if I didn't reset right then. But I made a much more fundamental mistake even before that. At the start of the run, I was focused on the lack of bug moves and chose Hidden Power Bug as a result. However, I could have taken any other type of Hidden Power. What about Hidden Power Ice, for instance? It's a special attack and would have helped against Jasmine, Claire, and in this case, Lance. At this point, I could just edit my save file and switch my Hidden Power's typing by rearranging my DVs. But I don't think that that's fair. I did pick Hidden Power Bug, and so that's a misplay from the beginning of the run that I'm just going to have to deal with. I want to see this run through with it. To beat Lance, I'll need to just keep leveling up. But I'm pretty sick of grinding in Victory Road. I'm tired of just running around and fighting all these wild Pokemon that give so little experience. But there is another way to train. I can just face the Elite Four over and over and lose every single time. This is actually how I trained as a kid, because you might just get lucky and defeat them. But to be fair to all the other runs where I haven't done this, each time I black out I'm going to count that as a reset. At level 73, I critical hit Lance's Dragonite. Aerodactyl comes out next and Hidden Power is now dealing half damage to it. I survive one rock slide, and that means I'll defeat this flying rock dinosaur for the first time. I'm not sure if Return can manage Charizard though, but my little dragon bug is so strong and knocks the flying salamander out. His level 50 Dragonite is last. My Return does good damage. Lance uses Fire Blast, and it misses, and with that incredible luck, Yanma has defeated the Dragon Master. In Kanto, I regularly skip as many trainers as possible, but today with Yanma, I fight as many of the optional ones as I can. I'm convinced that Red is going to take level 100. This run has been brutal so far. Normally, the Kanto gyms are easy, but this time Surge takes Yanma out because of paralysis. This status condition alone is responsible for almost all of my losses. If I was just using held items, this would have been much easier. However, Surge is my last loss on the way to blue. He opens with Pidgeot, and this fat pigeon is easy to manage. Rhydon comes out next, and... Okay, I don't have an answer for this one. I honestly just forgot to teach Yanma Giga Drain. Good job, Scott. There's another reset. But there's a silver lining here, that these resets really don't hurt that much when there's this many. Coming back with Giga Drain, Rhydon is now an easy one hit. Next, the Fire Doggo uses Flamethrower, which does just under half damage, letting Yanma defeat it. Gyarados is next. I tried Giga Drain, but this isn't the best option. Return knocks it out next. He's only got two Psychic types left, so Hidden Power Bug is an asset, and it takes care of both of them. Red, the ultimate challenge, the silent protagonist, the man who forgets about Thunderstone, is next. And he really should have used one, because Yanma wrecks Pikachu. Charizard comes out after that, and I just don't stand a chance. Okay, so I've got to use my 10 rare candies. And now the Charizard is a two hit. I'll use Giga Drain for Blastoise in order to heal up a bit before the Snorlax comes out. The turtle misses and then I get a critical hit. Sleepy Bear time. With the power of return on my side, Yanma surprises me and is able to defeat the Snorlax in a straight up fight. Venusaur is next. And here I make a misplay. I choose to just take it out with Hidden Power rather than heal. I was thinking that Hidden Power Bug would one shot the Espeon because it's super effective. But unfortunately, Espeon outspeeds because I'm paralyzed. Again, this status condition is the reason that Yanma fails. I'll try one more time, and if I fail, the grind towards level 100 begins. I've made my peace with this being the reality for today's challenge. At level 90, Yanma can make it past the Pikachu and Charizard consistently. Blastoise is where the fight gets scary. Giga Drain helps me recover health, but Blizzard is going to do a lot of damage. And then it misses. That luck gives Yanma the opportunity to knock the turtle out, and move on to Snorlax with green health. Red chooses Body Slam first, but he really likes to use Amnesia, so he goes for its second turn, and that allows me to get two turns of return damage in against the Sleepy Bear. So Yanma's incredible speed lets it get a third attack off and knock the wall out. Hidden Power Bug for Venusaur. It sets up Solar Beam, and my second attack takes it down. Espeon is the final Pokemon. It comes out and I use Hidden Power Bug. It's a one hit. Yanma did it at level 90. I'm so surprised by this result. Good job, little dragonfly. Since reaching Lance, I've had the question about Hidden Power Ice on my mind, so I want to go back now for consistency's sake and test it out against all of the leaders that were very challenging throughout this run. To do this, I'll use save files that I copied before the start of each of those fights during my previous run. I'll just edit Hidden Power with the save editor, so let's find out if an ice move would give Yanma some extra power. Because Ice resists Ice, I thought that Price might be a bit more difficult, but he really isn't. 
I really only need wing attack against him. Against Jasmine at level 45, I thought that Hidden Power Ice might be better. That's because Yanma has higher special attack and Magnemite has lower special defense. But in this case, it's not doing enough damage to make this fight easy. However, at level 50, I'm able to get past the Magnemites with greater ease by just spamming Hidden Power. As was the case before, even if I get paralyzed, I can outspeed the Steelix, because it's really slow. This is where Hidden Power Ice really shines, as it allows Yanma to take the snake out in two hits. I tried the fight again just to verify this result, and I get a win right away. The League is different without a Bug-type move though. Hidden Power Ice takes care of Will's Zatu, and Wing Attack can deal with most everything else. This fight honestly didn't really get harder than it was before, I'd say it's about the same. Koga's easier now, Ice Beam's great against Fortress and the Crobat. Bruno's also easier because Ice Beam gives Yanma a good way to take the Onyx out in a single hit, making his entire team a one-hit sweep. So at this section I actually put Ice Beam in the script. Normally when I make mistakes like this I'm just genuinely reading the script incorrectly, but this time I wrote it down wrong. <laughs> Whoops. Let's move on to Karen. I forget Detect and I also forgot to update it in my overlay. I update all of those movesets live while I'm playing the game. Whoops. So Sand Attack messes up my accuracy. Then Houndoom comes out and knocks Yanma out with two flamethrowers. The solution here is just to avoid Sand Attack with Detect as I did before and add rest to my moveset. That will give me the ability to heal just in case. On my first fight against her with this new moveset I managed to win, so so far so good. Lance is last and he was tied for the most difficult trainer for Yanma to defeat previously. Wing Attack 1 hits Gyarados with a critical hit. It would have just gone down because it used Rain Dance anyways. With Hidden Power Ice I get to one shot all of the Dragonites. Aerodactyl is also a one hit. Charizard doesn't faint and hits a massive flamethrower. I think that the only way that this fight would be a loss is if the Charizard got a critical hit against Yanma, so that's a big improvement. What about Red? The problem here is that Blastoise is doing too much damage with Blizzard and then Snorlax can knock Yanma out. Rest doesn't allow me to heal in time to do the damage I need to knock the Sleepy Bear out before it body slams me into oblivion. The solution is to stall against Blastoise to get the fortune of it missing Blizzard. That's actually why I won my previous attempt. Blastoise missed, and then the rest of the fight was simple. And that's how it goes this time as well. There's a 30% chance of this happening, and stalling the Blastoise out with rest and waiting for it to miss Blizzard is fairly consistent. After how hard this run was, I'm pretty exhausted, and I'm ready to add Yanma to the tier list. Using Hidden Power Bug, it gets a time of 3 hours, 36 minutes, and 58 seconds, earning it a spot in the B tier. Despite clocking in around the time of Gligar and Sneasel, Yanma felt way worse. Whitney, the Burn Tower rival, Morty, Jasmine, and Lance were all significant challenges. I haven't reset or had to grind this much in a run for a while. You'll also notice as I play more and more of these, I'll be adjusting the time ranges of the tier list. I suspect as I play with Pokemon like Ho-Oh and Lugia, for example, that the S tier will become times that are under 2 hours and 30 minutes. Up next in Johto is Apom, so subscribe and ring the chime echo so that you'll be notified when that video releases. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and share it with a friend. You've listened to a lot of my thoughts, so it's time to listen to yours. I read all the comments, so write a message down below. It's my goal to go full-time with this channel, so all these small engagements really do help me out. But if you want to go above and beyond, consider joining my Patreon. I've been collecting the original 151 patrons, and we actually reached that milestone this week. To say thanks for all the support, I'm going to put together an extra bonus versus video for you. It's going to come out probably later in the month because it's going to be a big project, but I'm really excited about it because it's going to be my first three-way. But three ways aside, the most important thing is that you're just here watching. Thanks so much. If you've made it this far, you're incredible. I'll see you in my next video. It's bloopers time. But Game Freak really tried to improve things in Generation 2 and introduced... Uh, introduced! Ah, just this first paragraph. I said like every line in that first paragraph like three times. <laughs> like, they're so great is one of the lines. And that was even hard. Okay, let's, uh, let's do all that again and like actually do this well. So it seems like fair game. However, I won't use the double TM. However, I the double TM. Great. <laughs> double team. Double TM. That's actually easy to mess up. Just before we face Lance's son, I'll mention my approach to the music in this video. I'm trying to mix things up a bit, so <laughs> I'm trying to mix things up a bit. That's like a that's a good music joke. Uh no, it's not. <laughs> it's not really a joke. Okay, wait, let's do that again. Just before we face Lance's son, I'll approach. I'll approach. Just before we face his lens. Faces? Nah, I'm falling apart now. <laughs> oh my gosh. On the journey south. Uh, ah, ah. In doing so, I also forget foresight. This is a huge mistake. 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 Ah, I gotta do that whole paragraph again. 
After exchanging blows for three turns, pseudo pseudo Wudo. Pseudo, pseudo Wudo. Come on. Pseudo Wudo. I don't know why it's Pseudo Wudo. I used to call it Pseudo Wudo. Woo. Because it's like woo with lots of O's. Pseudo Wudo. But Pseudo Wudo. Right? Pseudo Wudo. Pseudo Wudo. I lose a third fight against it, and at this point, I can't waste more turn. I lose a. F I lose a third fight against it, and at this point. And at this point. I lose a third fight against it, and at this point, I. Ah! That line's hard. I'm like. I lose a third fight, and at this point. I lose a third, I lose a third fight, and at this point, I lose a third point, uh, no, <laughs> ah, I lose a third fight, and at this point, I can't waste more time, double team is the answer, I set it up five times, pseudo widow mimic, double team is the answer, I set it up five times, and then pseudo widow mimics, ah, double team is the answer, I set it up five times, pseudo widow mimics, oh, this is so hard, why is this pseudo widow fight so hard to narrate? Oh my gosh. Okay, well, maybe the narration for this fight is just gonna be me messing it up over and over and over again while Pseudo Wudo knocks me out. Ugh.